Hello friends, good evening and welcome to the webinar this evening. Let us begin with a prayer. Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, friend, beloved God, saints and sages of all religion, we bow before you all. Please help us to understand the teachings of yoga and give us strength and courage to apply these teachings in our daily lives. Om Shanti. So friends, I was reading a few days ago, you know, this about the scientist, Albert Einstein, as we know that uh, he was one of the greatest scientists which world has produced. And he was one of the greatest geniuses of the last century, we may say. And we know that all his life, he was working on unfolding the secrets of the universe, trying to see how the universe works, what are its laws. And some of his discoveries, you can say we are still, you know, scientists are still trying to see what exactly he meant. But, you know, in the later part of his life, he said, you know, I rather than just seeing and understanding the working of this universe, I am more interested in knowing who created the universe and what were the thoughts by which this universe was created. So in a way, you know, he was going to the root of the universe that how this universe came into existence. And he said, rest is all just a detail. So this is really interesting because as we apply the same understanding to the teachings of health, if you see Yogananda's teachings of health, they take us to the root. Now, many healers, doctors, you know, they try to understand this subject of health by, you know, understanding the physical health or let us say mental health or at the most emotional or spiritual health. But, you know, Yogananda said that unless you take it from the root, which is the spiritual health, you know, you will be just scratching the surface, which is to say that if you will not lift the puppet from the central string, everything will be just lopsided and this is what he said which was the one of the greatest components and greatest you know contribution of his towards the yogic perspective of health was that he gave it a new expression and he said that if you have to understand health that spirituality is the backbone and what he meant exactly was that if you know who you are really how you have come into existence, who has created you, what is your relationship with the creator, you will not be able to enjoy the real health. So in that sense, you know, Yogananda said that just like in our house, you know, we have different appliances working, we have fan, we have lights, we have computers, refrigerator or an AC. He said everything is working on one unit. And what is that? It is basically the electricity we can say which is running all these appliances and he said in the same way our body if you see all the trillions of cells you know which their functions their metabolism all the organ systems and not only the body and the cells but also he said your thought process your feeling your will it is all running on one single unit and he gave that term and he said it is the life force and which in yoga language we also say it is the prana. So in a way, you know, he said, if you really want to improve the health quotient, then all you have to improve upon is your prana quotient or the life force quotient of your life. And then he gave many different ways in which it, this quotient can be improved. He said, yes, you can improve the, on the life force by taking nourishing food by taking a balanced diet by absorbing the rays of the sun by doing deep breathing exercises by imbibing prana from the fresh air but you know one of the very interesting things he contributed which i did not see in other teachings was that he designed a system by which he said you can imbibe this life force from the cosmic source and universe around you by using the agency of your will. Now, this was something which they don't talk about in the medical literature. I'm also a medical doctor and I can say that I have not read 
any of that thing in the medical textbooks that how by using your willpower alone, you can absorb tremendous amount of life force into yourself. And he said, there is no limit to that. And by imbibing not only the quantity of life force, but also by harmonizing it, by improving the flow of this life force more and more so that it is flowing in different cells through these nerve channels freely, he said health will be like a fruit which is born out of a flower, which is to say it will be a natural corollary. So how he designed, in fact, a very beautiful system to, he, to that, he said he gave the term energization exercises. And these exercises, he said, which are total 39 in number. So today we are going to share with you a couple of these exercises. But basically what he was saying was with the system which he designed almost 100 years ago, he said, this is such a beautiful system. It is in fact like a pranayama that by doing these exercises, you can dissolve, you can get rid of almost any kind of illness, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Now think about that. Now, no, not, no medical textbook can ever claim that they have a panacea, that yes, you do it or you take a pill and all your illnesses will dissolve. And so when I read this uh, about the teachings of Yogananda, I was really excited about the whole subject and I started, you know, learning more about it, practicing more, in, bringing more uh, of these teachings into my daily life. And I can testify to this fact, friends, that if you really have that commitment and patience to apply these teachings in your life, then they have the power to change your life and they can really turn, turn your life, you know, which I'm sharing from my own experience. So today I'm going to share with you very few simple exercises which you can do. And then I will give it to Aditya who will share something more about the teachings of this great master. So let us uh, do this, some of these exercises. They can be done while sitting also and they can be done while standing also. Which we have to remember by doing these exercises is that there is always an ocean of prana or the life force which is all around us. And by using our willpower, which is to say, our willingness, not a grim willpower, but putting our whole mind and attention into it by using concentration and also at the same time keeping a great reverence for this power which is there, which has created us, which is flowing in every cell of our body, which is everywhere. You can see that you can not only feel this prana, but bit by bit, you can actually build upon it and you will see that your health will improve every day. So are you going to join me in these exercises? So So first simple exercises, very simple pranayama, what we call double breathing. So what we do here is that we inhale double and we exhale. It is like, so you inhale double and you exhale double. Again, you inhale Now, very simple, what you do here is that you tense all your muscles. Now, you feel that you are inhaling the prana, you're inhaling the energy through the breath. So, let us inhale double. Now, tense all your body muscles starting from feet to your legs, thighs, chest, abdomen, arms. And just hold the tension for a few moments. Be conscious. Don't put jerks, hold it maybe for a few seconds and then by exhaling, you exhale and you relax. You can repeat this exercise a couple of times. Tense all your muscles. And relax. Again, one more time.
now you can also simply do the exercise for let's say weight lifting now this is another exercise in which you are putting your will now kg weight in both your hands and you are lifting the weight by pulling them so you inhale and you push it down again inhale and push it down now very simple exercise of doing a full arm raises in a large circles so you inhale and you bring it down anti clockwise so there are many such exercises friends there are total 39 in number so we won't be able to show you all today but now i'll give it to aditya and he will share some other components of the teachings of this great master thank you amar good evening everybody my name is dr aditya and uh, i'm speaking from pune uh this evening you know we are starting we have been doing this course of um, sharing the teachings on radiant health by the great yoga master paramhansa yogananda ji this is a book he wrote autobiography of a yogi now those of you who are already attending these classes of course know about yogananda ji and uh, some of the teachings that of his that your uh, dr amar and i have been sharing but this evening we are also starting a fresh batch and uh, this particular video we are making will be shared extensively uh, we are going to promote it and invite many other participants you might say new participants to come and experience and practice these teachings so we are kind of going back to some of the very basic things which personally i very much like you know all great yoga masters they have often shared that when in doubt come back to the basics amar you could mute over there and uh, it is very important for us to understand that uh, this book for example autobiography of a yogi written by yogananda ji was written about 70 years ago which was towards the end of yogananda's life even before that for many decades he was sharing the teachings of yoga meditation health how to increase concentration how to strengthen our will power develop a strong mind change our habits and uh, those teachings now one may feel oh this was all 100 years ago i don't know if it's relevant now the most interesting thing is it is not only relevant it has been shown by science and modern research which keeps coming that this really works it helps you know for example yogananda ji spoke of sun exposure now of course we all know sun exposure is good for us but so many of us do not get enough of it and we are dependent on medications and such yogananda ji like many other yoga masters and the philosophy of ayurveda which is practiced spoke of the tremendous benefits of fasting water fasting partial fasting these days something which is called intermittent fasting eating light or not at all at dinner time he spoke of that he spoke of its benefits its healing effects on the body the benefits of meditation and yoga asanas on our brain on our body he spoke of that he spoke of the plasticity of the brain and mind in his autobiography he has mentioned that statement but neuroplasticity to modern medicine was popularized only after 1985 and actually only in 2005 in the famous book by dr norman doidge the point i'm trying to make is that these teachings which we are have the good fortune of sharing with you all are very relevant they are coming from a source of great wisdom and uh, in these times especially we have time on our hand health is of great concern to everybody people are taking a personal responsibility and interest in that more than ever which really is how anything works so with that i want to let us know that you can tell your friends and other people about this offering which is totally free of charge and we will be sharing it from that context now i could go on and on about some other things that yogananda ji shared just as an introduction but i also wanted us to for in the remaining about 10 12 minutes that we have little bit ponder about an aspect of health 
that has been coming to the fore these days. World Health Organization, before this pandemic broke out, of course, this rightly so is the concern for everybody right now. It's like all hands are on the deck for that. But just a few months ago, friends, uh, the news of anxiety in the last one year, this was building up and then the study came, the statistics came that anxiety is the most common mental uh, issue people are facing world over these days. Now, people may say, well, life has become like that. A good question to ask is, is there something within you and me, in our body, in our brain, within our capacity that we could strengthen, not just to somehow survive, but to come out with flying colors? Again, to put it more biologically, might there be a place in our brain where, of course, anxiety is processed. We all know that it's in the limbic system, the back side of the brain. And some anxiety is good for us. But when it starts getting too much, is there another part of our brain that you and I could kickstart, switch on, shall I say, using tools, techniques, and practices by which we could immediately, in a matter of minutes or sometimes even moments after some practice, become calm become more kind, cooperative, could qualities like resilience, which is, you can say on one level, the antidote or the way to go when we are facing anxiety and such, can we develop resilience? Is there a part in our brain where resilience can be strengthened and become our second nature? Can willpower, decision-making, integration of information, does it happen in some part of our brain? Of course, it happens. It has to happen somewhere. Can we strengthen that circuit? Can we again make it second nature? Qualities which we all enjoy, universal qualities like maternal love. And when I say maternal love, I am reading out of a neurosurgical textbook. This is not some philosophical phrase just because we all like it. Let's put it out there. It is all processed at the prefrontal lobe. And by meditation, by nasal breathing, deep breathing through the nose, focusing on that, and we will do that just now, by meditating, because in meditation, Yogarandaji said, keep a straight spine and keep your gaze slightly uplifted above the horizon. We trigger, we make the neuronal activity in the front part of the brain more. The blood flow is more, the oxygen uptake is more, the glucose uptake is more over there. What does all that mean for our uh, fighting the pandemic, shall I say, of anxiety? It simply means, and something doctors have known for the last 20 years by brain studies, that at any given moment, if the prefrontal lobe is more active, the limbic system is, you might say, deactivated. There's an inverse proportion there. And if the limbic system starts firing more and more and more, the prefrontal lobe becomes to that degree, less active. The neuronal activity goes down. So what do we want to become? How do we want to live our lives naturally in all those positive states? Meditation helps with that. Yoga asanas help with that. There are many benefits. Like I said, we could go on and on into that subject. But why would somebody do a shirshasana, an inverted uh, body pose? Why would we take our head down in other poses, balasana or padahastasana? Why do we do those things? Why do we exercise? Even running and jogging does the same to some degree to our front part of the brain. It increases the activity over there. So all these things happen because we can develop ourselves. We can strengthen. The stress outside will remain what it is. This time a new illness has come. Sometimes it's a psychological problem. All those things. We cannot control the outer environment so much we can control and work upon ourselves. And this is what this great yoga master Paramahansa Yogaranda taught, that you have to take at least half of the responsibility of your health. Today is Good Friday. World over, people are, you know, thinking about the life of Christ. Easter is coming soon. And Christ, when he used to heal people, Yogaranda used to put it, he has put it in his writings. He used to say that Christ would say, Go out and sin no more. 
I have interceded now sin no more. And Yogananda Ji explained that he was telling people, suggesting to them that as a doctor, as a spiritual doctor, he had intervened, he had healed them once, but now they will have to change their habits. Go out and sin no more. Take responsibility of your health. And Yogananda Ji's health teachings are compiled in this little book called How to Achieve Growing Health and Vitality. We have a book on affirmations, which are, again, we'll share about this. How can we cultivate positive mental habits by repeating those affirmations? We have his book on emotional health. We have his health healing teachings under the subject of divine will healing, as Dr. Amar was sharing. Is there a God? Is there a creator? How can we be in harmony with his laws? What, how can we understand those things? How can we apply them in our daily lives? So such a, you might say, seemingly uh, amorphous subject, you know, is very easily presented to us through these great masters. And I want to add one more thing, friend, if you're listening to this for the first time, that these teachings are extremely universal. Just because they came through a channel, Paramahansa Yogananda, it does not mean they have to be sectarian or they were his teachings, not at all. Many of the teachings that he shared and compiled and encouraged others to practice were very universal. Like I said, they're from the lineage of Ayurveda or they have been mentioned in other scriptures and other paths and religions also. And above all, they are commonsensical, which is why science is now catching up with them. And as they are researching on these subjects, sun exposure, fasting, healing, meditation, yoga, exercise, break the sweat, he used to say. These things all help. And uh, so I invite you to participate in this and take responsibility. Again, this pandemic has given us an opportunity. It has given us a time period in which we can rethink. I'm sure world over people have gone through that already. We are rethinking in a big way. What, was, what happened? Where was I headed? What shall I do going ahead from now? When it comes to the subject of health and healing, we all have to take some responsibility and it's a joyful responsibility. So with that introduction, I would uh, invite you to this series. And as I said, let us practice. You know, years ago, I read this article in Harvard Business Review because you see, when you have health, mental health, emotional, social health is also very important. How do we interact with others? How do we conduct ourselves? How good are we with the larger community in which we live? Whether it is the family unit, workplace, our relatives, the neighbors, or new people, total strangers, that comes under, you might say, social health. And of course, as Dr. Amar said in the beginning, spiritual health. Where are all these uh, subjects? How can we practice all these subjects? Well, through these teachings of working on ourselves, and then we see that our health on all these different fronts is improving. So today, let us practice a little bit about the prefrontal lobes, as I mentioned, friends. So let us sit up straight right now. Let's gently pull the shoulder blades up, up and gently roll them behind. Make sure the heart is open yet relaxed. The shoulders are away from the ears and they are relaxed. Now you can keep your hands anywhere on the thighs facing the palms facing upward. And now focus on the abdominal area. Make sure your diaphragm is relaxed. The abdominal area around the belly button. And we will take a few deep breaths through our nose. Now you may say, I have been breathing through my nose all my life. My answer to that would be, that is why your brain function is what it is. It is good. But more important than just passive breathing is the element of concentration, awareness. Yogananda used to say, awareness precedes control. If we are aware of something, our ability to work on that increases much more. So let's increase our awareness of the breath now. Close your eyes. Feel the cool air entering and ascending up the nose. You can take some deep intentional breaths right now. Feel the warm air 
coming down the nose and out of the nostrils. Inhaling slowly. Enjoying the pause and the breath now returning down the nose. One last time. Follow the incoming air and outgoing breath and air current. Now we will do something called triangular breathing. Inhale through your nose. Hold the breath. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Very simple practice. Inhale slowly. Hold the breath. Try to focus at the point between the two eyebrows, the forehead area. Breathe out. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. One last time. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Continue to keep your eyes closed and simply observe the breath in the nose as we did at the beginning of this practice. We are not controlling the breath. Just for a minute, enjoy its entry in and up the nose and gradual exit down and out of the nostrils. Let's take a deep inhalation now through the nose. Breathe out from the mouth. Once more inhale through the nose. And breathe out thrice from the mouth. Please open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining friends. And one last word. If you're feeling a slight change in the way you're feeling right now, perhaps more peaceful, calm, quiet, inward, or as if the room or your surroundings are looking brighter, there are reasons to all of that. Simply put, it is because we have gathered our energy inside. We, are, we have brought more energy to the point between the two eyebrows. And uh, that is what I was trying to mention in the beginning, that this brings more activity in the front part of the brain and actually does make us more calm and quiet and centered. So we look forward to sharing these teachings with you in the coming weeks and uh, see you again online. Thank you, Amar.
and thank you barakil and thank you all for participating if you have a question and if you'd like us to cover any subject particularly please write to us at online at anandaindia.org thank you